What if we watch another Kurzgesagt video today, chat? I didn't really get to watch the is meat really that bad video. Do you guys want to find out if meat is really that bad? We watched part of it, but then I got banned. How bad is meat for you? Thank you, Blake, for the membership. Thank you, Scully2k, for the membership. Thank you, Vrenjin de la Cruz, for the membership. I'm a full-time school and work full-time. Today was awful, and I'm glad I can come home to your stream. Hey, my day sucked, too, today, Colin. I, I had a bad start to my morning, but, you know, I try to turn things around. And hopefully the day pans out great for the rest of it. I'm a junior at ASU, and I love hearing your stories about your time there. Appreciate that, Brett. Hope you're enjoying it. So is Hivemind dead, or is there some magic auto could pull out of his butt to make it work? I am working directly with the team who made Hivemind to work on new shows. Because uh, Hivemind is actually not a Twitch production. It was a uh, Tempo Storm production um, who Twitch bought the rights for Hivemind. So I can't promise you that Hivemind will come back. But I can promise you I'm working with the team that made Hivemind. Which, you know, that's pretty damn good, I think. Anyway, video! Food is arguably the best thing about being alive. It's so, no other it's bodily so pleasure sick. is enjoyed multiple times every day and never gets old. Well, jerking off. It's an expression of culture, our parents' love, and a means of celebration or comfort. That's why it hits a special nerve when we're told we should change what and how we eat to fight rapid climate change. <laughs> the Kurz Gazette CEO watching me react like, ugh. Why? Why did we unban this guy? He offers no value. <laughs> he dumbs down our videos, if anything. Chat, what are you? Are you guys eat to live or live to eat? Two types of humans in this world. People who eat to live. All right. It's a means of survival for them. Basically, eat to live is like, oh, fuck, I... It's like not. It's like 1 a.m. and I realize I haven't eaten since 2 p.m. I don't really care about food, but I need sustenance to live. Let me just shovel this in my mouth. Blah, 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 blah. If you've ever thought, oh man, I would love some soil in, you are eat to live. <laughs> live to eat is like your day revolves around food, you know? Like you specifically think about food before you eat. You're excited to eat. You're like planning out what you're going to eat. Certainly every human touches both, but pick which category you're in. Nobody's exactly 50-50. There's no universe where you're exactly 50-50. You lean maybe 51-49 one way or the other. Admit it. You lean one way or the other. You're just being indecisive. Now pick, you son of a. Soylent is genuinely delicious. I crave it. Hey, man, hope the sponsorship's panning out. You fucking <laughs> weirdo. You you gotta be memeing with that one. Soylent is not delicious. I mean, it's not bad, but like, it's so mid. I have an eating disorder. What do I say? You can still be live to eat. It's just that your body is, is uh, <laughs> like, um, eat and die or whatever. Your, your body's not with you. You're not very synced. But your mind can still enjoy the food. <sighs> Watch the egg video after, after. It's a day of learning today. One of the most delicious foods, meat, gets the worst press. It doesn't help that the topic is really hard to properly research yourself and that debates get emotional quickly. But clearly, science can give us an answer. Mm -hmm. The what reality science say? is, well, it's complicated. Let's take a look at three climate arguments against meat that are used a lot and see what happens. Bum, bum, bum. One. Does our diet really play that big a role in climate change? Certainly. Feeding billions of people is impossible without causing emissions. Even if someday we have zero carbon tractors, refrigerators and cookers running on renewable energy and electric trucks to move our food, there are still unavoidable emissions. Rice emits methane. We cut down forests to make room for pastures and crops. And we emit nitrous oxide when we use fertilizers and manure. I feel like society, although information is way more accessible than ever, is getting so much fucking dumber. 
because like I feel like there are kids nowadays or even adults who are who like don't think about like the millions of acres of farmland that we need to grow the food to feed seven billion people. They're like, oh, no, food comes from grocery store. Yeah, no, it comes from. No, no, Curse Gazette. No. It was a ruse. I got bamboozled. It was a ruse all along. No, 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 no. Philip, the CEO, would not do me like this. This is a bait. All right, this is bait. We can watch through. Chat, I'm not going to get banned. Worldwide food production is responsible for about 26% of all human-made greenhouse gas emissions, which is unfortunate since food is not optional. While 26% doesn't sound <laughs> that so bad, scared. it means that even if we extinguished so all other sources scared. of emissions today, the emissions from food alone would still use up our entire carbon budget by 2100. If my stream dies, I'm just making a YouTube so exclusive no video on Mobile Mail. So no matter how we twist and turn it... <laughs> if my stream dies right now, I'm making a video on Mogul Mail and I'm starting drama with Curse Gazette, alright? <laughs> you thought Pokemane Jadeon was bad? You're about to get a whole world of hurt, Curse Gazette. <laughs> Food is a real driver Don't of climate change. Like this. Still, Don't emissions me from like different this. food items vary a lot. How do things look when we compare their footprints separately? This is what Toast felt like when he was watching the last episode of Death Note. Okay. All right. Come on, baby. Come on. We're in this. We're in this, bitch. Food's climate impact <laughs> is most often based on life cycle assessment. Oh, the life cycle assessment. An analysis I've actually that heard looks about at that. all the emissions of a product throughout its existence, from production to transportation, packaging, use, and waste management. In the most detailed meta analysis. Oh, oh! I missed my mouth completely. Do you think Philip revoked my ability to watch Kurz Gazette videos because he realized how dumb I was and he was afraid that all of the information he was trying to express concisely and coherently would be interrupted by my uh, brain? This of life cycle assessments to date, beef emissions stand out at the top. On average, a kilogram beef. of beef emits 71 kilograms of CO2 equivalents. Sheesh. Lamb is also high at 40 kilograms. Pork emits 12 and poultry 10 this kilograms. This means nothing to me. At the bottom, we have lots of plant-based foods. Although I understand Potatoes, that Potatoes, for example, pork. emit around 150 times less than beef. The most important aspect of food isn't weight, though. It's nutrient density. A kilogram of beef would keep you alive much longer than a kilogram of potatoes. Mm. So how does the ranking what change if feathers? we compare emissions per calorie or protein? Not much. Animal protein is still the most costly for the environment. Chat, relax. All right, we're not going to get banned by Kurz Gazette. And beef and lamb are also outliers in emissions per calorie. But is this fair? After all, not all beef is the same. There are all sorts of ways to rear cattle, from pure grass-fed to factory farming. The worst beef comes in at 105 kilograms of emissions per 100 grams of protein, the best at only nine, Ooh. a tenfold difference. In contrast, most other foods, especially plant-based, have a much narrower spectrum. Still, the best beef is worse than the worst plant. Okay, but this seems promising. Can we buy the right beef and lower our emissions? Maybe by buying locally produced beef to minimize our footprint? Two, does buying local food actually matter? Yes. I'm guessing going in that it 100% does. Let's you know what the biggest problem is? I feel like the biggest problem is marketing. Because when I go to a grocery store, I'm, I'm so fucking confused. Because nowadays, rather than using these labels to help us understand what is better for our environment and our world, it's just used to sell more products. And I hate it. I'm just, I'm just sitting there... And everything's natural, organic, homegrown, home fed. And I don't know if it's like real. Because I, I, then I see shit that's like, oh, cage free chickens actually doesn't mean shit. They're still like in as bad of a situation, if not worse sometimes.
stick with beef since it's such an outlier. By buying locally, you are trying to avoid emissions from transportation and packaging. But it turns out these only account for 0.5 to 2% of beef's total emissions. Holy shit. Actually, transport and packaging combined are only about 11% of all food emissions. Nearly all food transport emissions are produced over the last few miles, the regional travel on the road supplying the markets and shops in your area. International food transport happens mostly on freight ships, which are insanely efficient. For example, shipping one kilogram of avocados from South America to Europe generates about 0.3 kilograms of CO2 equivalents in transport emissions and around 2.5 kilograms overall, while one kilogram of beef from your local butcher will come in at 18 kilograms in CO2 equivalents at least. Well, isn't that... Shouldn't it be avocados for both? Because now I need to understand the difference between beef and avocados. So even when shipped great distances, emissions from almost all plant-based foods cause lower emissions than locally produced animal products. Okay, so if transport doesn't play a big role, what causes the vast amounts of emissions from beef then? By far the largest share of beef emissions consists of methane released directly by the animals. <laughs> While CO2 hangs That's the around coolest for fact. centuries, methane only stays in the atmosphere for decades. I think the coolest fact in the world is that cow shit is ruining our entire world. I can't believe farts are going to be what takes us down. And like alien nations in, in planets, in galaxies, like centuries and millennia from now will find our planet. And they'll be like, oh yeah, they, obviously they had a problem with too much cow shit. I don't know how they didn't figure that one out. But in these short periods, it is very powerful. All in all, methane, methane. has already caused methane. 23 to 40 percent of human-made warming so far. There's controversy about how bad this is exactly, and we don't want to He's dive into deep. He's fucking making up here. how to say words. But the way things stand, any no kinds way this of dude extra walks around saying controversy. Still, all cows burp and fart to similar degrees. What explains the spectrum of beef emissions? There are a couple of things. It makes a difference if the beef comes from a dairy herd or one dedicated to beef production. 44% of the world's beef comes from dairy cows, mm -hmm. sharing its footprint with dairy products. Dairy cows tend to get higher quality feed, which makes them grow faster and emit less methane. Geography also plays a role because it determines which farming methods are possible. The worst factor by far is the destruction of forests for farmland. Not only does this release the CO2 that was bound in the flora, it sets free carbon that was stored in the soil and destroys its ability to store it in the future. This aspect accounts for much of the range of emissions in beef. Why doesn't human shit hurt the atmosphere? Are there not more humans than cows? How many cows are in the world? The USDA reported the world cattle inventory at 1 billion. Yeah, that's that's a seventh the amount of humans that exists. So why when I drop a little shit or a, 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 a squeaky little fart, do I not hurt the environment? There's seven times as many of, of us. <coughs> Take that, your children. <coughs> now your grandchildren aren't going to be able to live in Florida. There goes Alaska, pieces of shit. <laughs> I'm going to roll the rest of your kids by the time I'm done this stream. The worst emitters are farms burning down rainforest for farmland, especially in Brazil. There is a sinister truth hidden here. Mm. The more animals suffer, the better they are in terms of climate change because they are way more efficient. They use less land and their food is brought right to them, and so they grow faster and don't expend energy on mm. things like walking. Cattle in a factory farm that never get to roam pastures can sometimes be less destructive for the climate than cattle grazing peacefully on That's a formerly sad. lush piece of rainforest. But isn't it a bit out of touch with reality to demonize cows so much? Some of the land these animals are grazing on isn't suitable for crops anyway. By grazing on pastures, they can turn things we can't digest into food. Isn't farming animals just a smart way to make the best use of unused resources? I think it's so pathetic we can't eat grass. Three. Don't cows mainly use land that we can't use for agriculture or other things? My secret conspiracy that I believe is that the government tries to stop us from eating grass, 
but it's actually free bountiful food <laughs> that would nourish and solve starvation. But they want to keep us dumb and poor, those governments. Someone get Hank Green on the phone. I'm trying to eat grass tomorrow. About half of the world's ice and desert...